I never saw anything that uh, indicated uh, that uh, the man was anything but guilty of this crime. You would still agree with the prosecutor who told, when he told the jury the FBI is not involved in this case? Absolutely. What about Julius Butler, the ex-Black Panther who named Pratt? Wouldn't it have been important for the jury to know that uh, there were FBI records showing dozens of contacts between him and the FBI? The fact that he had had contact with FBI officers or FBI agents who uh, uh, were uh, uh, keeping track of what was going on in the community at that time, at best, would only have been cumulative to what was already uh, presented at the trial with respect to Mr. Butler. Judge Nash concedes that the FBI had informants reporting on Pratt's conversations with his lawyers, that Pratt was a prime target of the FBI's counterintelligence program. You don't think any, any of that has any relevance to the possible fairness of the trial? No, I don't think it relates to the fairness of the trial. I think that it'd be speculating at best to say that that would have had an impact uh, on the jury in any way. In fact, four of the five jurors we were able to talk to agreed with juror Jeannie Rook that the new information would have prevented Pratt's conviction. I would have to vote for him innocent. Not guilty. Not guilty. I do not believe that we would have ever had a totally um, not guilty verdict um, just because of some of the other members of the jury. But I do feel that we would have had a hung jury. So far, the courts have turned down all of Geronimo Pratt's appeals for a new trial although they did force the California Department of Corrections to release Pratt from solitary confinement after he spent over five years there. For the last 10 years, Geronimo Pratt has been in the general prison population, where he's developed a reputation as a peacemaker. He is married, and because of good behavior, he has been allowed conjugal visits. Are you still a revolutionary? Do you believe in... in violent overthrow of the United States government? But no, I'm in, I, I've been in prison, um, married, and I have a, another wife I met, uh, who I'm presently married to, and two beautiful children, uh, 40 years old this year. <laughs> As it stands now, I'm only concerned about getting out of prison um, and also clearing my name and my family's name of this hideous murder. If you get out, playing you... basketball with my son. <laughs> Bulldog Lad, who has spent 35 years behind bars, was the leader of a white racist prison gang, but freely admits that he admires Pratt. When I look at Jerome Pratt, I don't look, I don't see him a black person. You know, I, I see somebody that's a man. I've seen this man step in and uh, stop, oh, a number of potential uh, uh, confrontations, racial confrontations. I've seen him put himself on the line. And you think he saved some lives in prison? Oh, without a doubt. Inmates and Inmates, maybe staff? Staff, uh, everybody. Bulldog's evaluation was seconded by correctional officers we talked with at San Quentin and by the prison psychologist who wrote an evaluation of Pratt for a meeting of the California Parole Board. Commissioner Maureen O'Connell read the psychologist's report into the record. His prognosis for parole should be excellent. His potential for violence is minimal. He is a principled individual and an idealist and supporter of human rights. It is hoped that at some time he be given an opportunity to actualize his potential. Let me ask you a question in terms of why... If you had the opportunity to do the same things today as you did in the 60s, would you do them? In the, in the 80s? Right. I doubt it. Uh, this is a whole different era. But Los Angeles Deputy District Attorney Diane Vizzani told the California Parole Board last spring, Mr. Pratt and his crime partner executed these two people. They turned around and pumped several rounds into the two victims. Mrs. Olson died 10 days later. The time Mr. Pratt left Vietnam, he was walking time bomb. He was mentally, physically, and emotionally in a combat mode. Are we dealing with a time bomb, or are we really dealing with a man that has changed? And I think we still have a root revolutionary man. He does have this network out there. If he chooses to set up a root revolutionary organization upon release from prison, it would certainly be easy for him to do so. The parole board agreed with the district attorney and refused to give Geronimo Pratt a release date. Come on, let's go. All right, the hearing will be concluded. Time is 6 p.m. 
there's apparently a pretty good basis for belief that you could be out right now if you wanted to be. You've served longer than someone does normally for your offense in the California prison system. You've got a good record. You've got a good report from your psychologist. You've got a, a good report from a lot of prison officials on how you behave. If you would say, hey, I did it and I'm sorry, you might be out already. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've been, that's been offered to me. <laughs> I've been even uh, enticed to escape quite a few times when I was taken to New York in 76 from Red Hand Adjustment Center. The uh, agents who uh, were escorting me when we landed in Chicago left me at the, at the counter at the help. I wasn't handcuffed to anything. One went to the toilet and one went, walked down the, you know, with a lot of people I could have walked away. When we got to Los Angeles Airport, an airport I'm very familiar with, they did the same thing. It was like they got tired and they walked ahead of me and traffic began to pass between us. I mean cars, a lot of cars. And I'm looking, all I had to do was turn around and jump in the car. I mean, you know, I know the area pretty good. But no, that's not my interest. You can't, I'm old Louisiana boy. I was raised, my mother, she's still living. You don't put no murder on me that I didn't do. The FBI refused our request for an interview. They said they stand by the court rulings denying Pratt a new trial. Pratt's lawyers have appealed. A decision is expected early next year. 1987 Motor Trend Car of the Year. The world's best-selling car. America's design leader. Now, during Ford's leadership celebration, get up to a $600 cash bonus from Ford. There's only one camera system you can buy that lets you hold the picture in your hand while you still hold the feeling in your heart. The Polaroid Spectra system. My grandma's the best. But what do you get a grandma for a birthday? Introducing the American Express gift check. It lets the people you love choose a present they love. The new American Express gift check. It's from my grandson. 60 Minutes, a CBS News weekly magazine, will continue. She was alone and lost in the world. Your parents are dead. She's a difficult child, Mrs. Medley. But he had the magic to touch her heart. Sometimes wishing makes things happen. And together, they brought a young boy the gift of love and the will to live. Hallmark Hall of Fame presents a Christmas gift for the whole family. The Secret Garden, Monday. This is CBS. At Christmas, there are many places that have lots of shops, but at Crown Center, you'll also have lots of help. There are friendly people to help you find the right store, and people to help you find the right size. Be wonderful. They'll even wrap your gifts and send you packages, make you feel glad you came. In fact, they could even tell you where the nearest mall is. But why would you want to know that? Crown Center. You like their shopping as much as they like the gifts. It's some sorry, it's some glad, it's some lonely, it's some mad. If I need you, I was wrong. If I miss you, I'll be strong. It's long distance, and with Southwestern Bell Telephone One Plus Dialing, it's the easiest way to let someone know how you feel. For Kids' Sake Special, Nothing But the Best, Wednesday at 7 on TV5. It's a myth of boxing that the two men in the ring are a couple of thugs without enough brains to do anything else for a living. Is there a doctor in the ring suggests that boxing, like everything else, is more complex than its myth? We begin with a visit from the doctor. He is the very model of a modern young physician, making his rounds bag in hand. Dr. Terry Crystal, age 28, seems to have all the spirit, dedication, the stamina to make it in a physically and intellectually demanding profession. The question is, 
Which profession? And in the new corner, Dr. Terry Crystal. Terry Crystal is a living, breathing, punching contradiction. Dr. Crystal was trained to heal. Terrible Terry was trained to hurt. Professionally since 1980, 12 wins, no losses, one draw. As an amateur European middleweight champion, all between classes and after graduating from medical school. For me, medicine is my vocation. Boxing is my sport. And just like uh, other medics are interested in different sports, I'm attracted to boxing. And I've always been attracted to boxing since, you know, I've always, it has always been a sort of a love. Understand? And gradually, I suppose, I have been, become addicted. As far as I'm concerned, boxing sort of represents an expression of man's ability to to fight adversity on his own. It's the last pure, um, pure battle or challenge or duel. Home for Dr. Crystal, as you've probably guessed, is Dublin, Ireland. Father, a professor of law and attorney. All three boys, boxers and university graduates. While still in medical school at Trinity College, Dublin, he was Irish and French amateur middleweight champion. Then he turned pro, and after graduating, decided to delay his medical career and take his best shot at boxing. He came to Brockton, Massachusetts, birthplace of the great heavyweight champion Rocky Marciano. It is a no-nonsense working-class town. It's also home of the Petronelli Brothers Gym. Goody and Pat Petronelli are best known as managers of Marvin Hagler. But in the sometimes sleazy world of boxing, they also have a reputation for being honest. The good guys in a bad business. What did Pat and Goody think when the good doctor walked in? Are you a real doctor? He says, uh, well, yes. I said, a medical doctor? I says, I, you know, I've been in the Navy medical, but I know doctors. He says, I'm an, I'm an MD. He says, I'm from, I've got my license in Ireland. He says, I says, what makes you want to fight? I mean, it's a rugged game. It's kind of make you go crazy. Take too many left hooks. The first fight, he was knocked down, I think, uh, twice in that fight. He sneaked it up, and he came back to the corner, and Goody asked him, how you feeling? He says, watch me in the next round. Can he come up fighting like an animal? And he stopped his opponent. And I said, boy, one thing we know tonight, we know he's hot, got a lot of hot. Kirk, does he work as hard as any one of these? He works as hard, kids. if not hot. Down the gym every night. This is a fact. He's so dedicated. So he's just as hungry. In that, in training, yes. And in, in attaining his goal, yes. He's out there hitting that road in the morning doing six, seven miles. I'm real pleased with him, honestly. I really, I'd be the first to say, uh, if he didn't, I'd say, hey, you're wasting your time down here. Wasting my time. When Dr. Crystal comes in this gym, he is like anybody else. He has no special privileges. He takes criticism. You wouldn't think you were talking to a doctor. He's this guy. But as a doctor, you know the effect of of getting pounded on the head to be very damaged, to be eye damage, as a surgeon, hand damage. Of course I'm concerned because, I mean, that's why I train. That's why I train hard. That's why I learn uh, the, the, book, the moves in boxing. I mean, that's what it's all about. And if I didn't, I would be taking uh, a large risk. That's why anybody who's not serious about boxing okay. would stay out of it, you know? We see a very s serious ethical problem with a physician uh, going into an activity in which the intent of the activity is to deliberately harm someone else's brain. The American Medical Association is not happy with Dr. Crystal. Dr. George Lundberg is editor of JAMA, the journal of the AMA. The first credo of a physician is, first, do no harm. And for a physician to deliberately do harm uh, is a real problem. Their approach to boxing uh, comes close to being fascist because what they're saying is that people cannot engage in a certain sport. Now, regardless of where people are coming from, that is fascist as far as I'm concerned. Denying somebody the right to engage in a sport that he loves.